In Luke chapter number 11, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly thank you for what the grace of God can do in a life of an individual who yields their heart to you. Now, Father, we're thankful for saving grace. God, we need sustaining grace and serving grace and, Lord, just living grace. And, Lord, we just need your grace. Because outside the grace of God, we're not worth anything. And so, Father, I realize as we assemble here this morning, there may be folks saved on their way to heaven, but they just need a touch of grace today. They need some help. And God, I'm glad they're in the right place. Because Lord, you're a God who seeks to help those that want help. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you just continue to stir around here. You know what we stand in need of. God, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel to deliver this little thought. And I pray that, God, there'll be nobody who'll be a stranger to the grace of God when the service is over. Lord, save that one nearest hell. God, speak to that heart that's stony and soften it. God, that one that is struggling, Lord, help them to take your yoke. Lord, that one that's low, lift them up. That one that is seeking, Lord, may they find. God, I pray that Jesus would be magnified and glorified through it all. Again, use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. Help your people. Lord, bless those that are sick. Help them. Be with Brother Clint's father. Touch him. Be with Miss Harris today. Touch her. Lord, I pray for Brother Mike. You'd help him this morning. And I certainly pray for Miss Lisa's sister. You know what's needed there. Lord, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Hang with me on the introduction. I've got to build a foundation once I get to the message. It's kind of like those that uh, go up in space. There's a lot of preparation getting that rocket ready. But when they get to that final countdown, boom, it goes off. All right, that's what the message is going to be. We've got to prepare something here. But let me help you with something uh, from the text. I want you to notice, first of all, the petition to be taught on prayer. In verse number 1, it came to pass that it is he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Uh, can I say something about the Lord? Uh, he was constantly teaching. Uh, uh, he left a command for his church to disciple uh, their converts. Uh, he's in the teaching business. Uh, the Lord wants us to understand. Uh, he wants us to know his truth and his promises. Uh, but notice in this uh, uh, verse that one of his disciples petitions him uh, to teach them how to pray. Uh, 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 what disturbs me, Brother Donald, uh, is all 12 of them didn't ask him. Uh, only one came to him, and that's about how it works out. Uh, uh, I guarantee you, in this uh, sanctuary this morning, uh, not everybody here is interested in what the Lord can teach them. Uh, but I've got news for you. Uh, if only one wants to know, uh, uh, the Lord is still faithful. Uh, I deliver the message, uh, even even if one uh, uh, has a need. And I've got news for you this morning. Uh, if you're the only...
only one in the building that needs a touch from him. Uh, hey, he don't care how big the crowd is. Uh, he'll make certain he comes right to you. Uh, we see the petition uh, to be taught on prayer. Uh, and then notice, if you will, the pattern for our prayer. Uh, now listen, uh, a lot of people, and they usually uh, uh, use Matthew chapter 6's uh, uh, rendition. They call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be. You know it. Uh, 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 and people uh, uh, call that the Lord's Prayer. But Brother James, that's not the Lord's Prayer. This is the model prayer. Uh, this is the pattern. Uh, he uh, in Matthew 6 says when you pray pray like this uh, 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 if you want to know the Lord's prayer you got to go to John 17 uh, where he uh, is praying to the Father and communing with the Father uh, and that will touch your heart when you see how Jesus prayed no wonder this disciple said Lord I've just heard you pray why don't you teach us how to pray notice the pattern uh, 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 for the prayer or the model uh, uh, what our prayer should include. Can I say, first of all, our prayer ought to include uh, that God's glory uh, uh, should be seen. Look what he said uh, in verse 2. Uh, and he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Uh, and what he is praying, what he is saying, he's saying uh, 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 you ought to pray as God's glory is displayed in heaven. Uh, uh, and all that goes on in heaven uh, uh, should be done on the earth, should be seen on the earth. Uh, uh, we ought to pray uh, uh, that the glory of God falls on this place today. Uh, hey, I've word, read in the word of God uh, on uh, several places where the Shekinah glory fell uh, and it was so impactful even the priests couldn't even go in the minister uh, and it touched hearts uh, and everybody bow and proclaim God is God uh, you know how to help Florence Kentucky uh, you know how to help the state of Kentucky uh, you know how to help our United States of America you know how to solve every problem uh, if the glory of God is seen among men uh, if folks could see him high and lifted up uh, he'll draw all men unto him uh, and we ought to pray and our pattern is God uh, whatever's going on in heaven uh, let it happen down here for a while huh? not only should our prayer include that his glory should be seen but our prayer ought to include that his goodness should be, but should be shown look what it says in verse 3 he says give us day by day our daily bread hey you know why you got what you got to eat God's been good to you uh, Everything you have came from the hand of God. The breath in your body, the clothes on your back, the car you drove in on, the house you live in, uh, uh, the food that you ate yesterday, the food you'll eat today, uh, uh, the money you got in the bank, the money you got in your pocket, uh, everything you got came from the hand of God. Uh, hey, and you've got to stand today and say, God's been good to you. You are fair and much better than you deserve. Uh you don't believe it, talk to Naj. I know it's hard to get him to talk back. You talk to him and ask him. He's ate more chicken since he's been in America than he ever dreamed he would see in the island of St. Lucia. Am I telling you the truth? Uh, they don't have much down there. Uh, well, we got it all around here. God's been good to us. Mm. And our prayer ought to be, include that his goodness should be shown. Can I say God chooses to use humans to affect other humans? And he's saying that uh, uh, if the goodness of God is to be shown, it'll be shown by us, showing others how good God's been to us. So we ought to brag on him more, tell folks how good God's been. Hmm? But then the, the model prayer, the pattern for our prayer also should include uh, 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 his graces should be shared. Brother James just sang about grace. I got choked up a little bit talking about grace. The grace of God must be shared. Why would the world come to God if they had everything they already needed? You know what they need? They need some grace. Look at verse 4. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every... Uh-oh. I believe the Bible tells us that 
as we forgive, God forgives us for Christ's sake. If you've got an unforgiving spirit, God won't be forgiving towards you. But notice what this says. Jesus says, uh, And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Can I say forgiveness and deliverance is all about the grace of God. And as God has extended grace to us, we ought to extend grace to others. Hmm? I tell you what, we'd have revival, Christian, if people would get all that unforgiveness out of their heart. Hmm? If we would just start forgiving, folks say, well, they don't deserve it. Well, you didn't deserve God forgiving you. All you deserved was hell. If we'd learn to forgive, we'd have revival. Because all that bitterness and anger and things that is oppressing you today would be released and you'd have liberty to live. Some of you are still upset Trump didn't win. You're holding all that in. I got news where you did win. But it don't matter. Joe Biden's not the president anyway. Well, what does all that matter? Jesus is still good, is he not? Some of you, you, you all bound up over stupid stuff. You just learn, you need to learn to forgive. Let the grace of God to help you. Huh? So we see that there is a pattern for our prayer. There was a petition to teach us to pray. But I want you to notice the promise concerning prayer. Look at verse number 9. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that seeketh receiveth, and, or asketh receiveth, and, every, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. That's a promise from God. Do you know how many times in my 47 years of being saved I have quoted that verse to God? And Brother Bob, can I say, he has never failed that verse. It's impossible for him to lie. Now, don't get crazy. I don't ask God for fleshly things. I don't ask him to give me a Corvette, although I'm looking at him. I've got Miss Annette about convinced. She told me, just make sure it's a convertible glory hmm? say what would you do with the Corvette drive the wheels off of it's what I would do hey if Big B can have his HD boot and boot down the road what's wrong with me having about 600 horsepower sitting underneath me huh but I don't ask God for a Corvette that's foolish but there have been times I've asked for his help there have been times when I've sought him say, God, you've got to show me. Huh? There have been times I've knocked on his door, say, God, are you still there? I'm telling you what a promise we have in those verses. Uh, there's the promise concerning prayer. And then there's a parable about prayer. This is kind of a hard story, really. Now, a parable, Jesus taught his disciples many times in parables, and parables are an earthly story with a hidden heavenly meaning. And he would use things that they could relate to. Hmm? I heard somebody recently say, well, I don't like a preacher who tells a lot of stories. Well, he wouldn't like Jesus as preaching. Uh, but notice the story Jesus uses to insinuate and to show the impact of prayer. In verse number 5, he said this, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine, is, his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he went from with, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, my children uh, are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, 
Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And then he says, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. But I want to look at this story for a minute. Now, let's set the table. Uh, this man is turned in for the night. And notice what happens and what transpires. First of all, he has uh, an unexpected uh, company show up. Now, how many were raised in the country? Be honest. Bob still lives in the country. Now, you city folks don't understand what I'm about to tell you. But country folks love for people to come and visit. They're very hospitable. They want folks to come and visit. And if somebody shows up, they'll make a place for them in their house. And the first thing they'll do is ask them if they want something to eat. I can remember my grandma, Miss Lynn's mother. I can remember folks just showing up. Sometimes friends, sometimes uh, folks that they knew from back when, and sometimes family would show up. And I mean, we was in the country. You didn't run to McDonald's. There wasn't no McDonald's, huh? We used to have to drive 40 minutes to get a pizza, huh? Well, uh, I can remember my grandma saying, well, I don't have much here to eat, but let me go in and fix something. And she'd be stirred in the kitchen. And before long, she'd say, uh, okay, it's ready. The whole table be uh, uh, filled up with food. Uh, I mean, uh, she might have a, a plate of cucumbers and tomatoes. Uh, uh, she'd have some uh, 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 food that was uh, she'd heat it up. And uh, uh, just the table be filled uh, and I've said this before, uh, if you go to the country uh, and somebody uh, invites you to stay for dinner, if you leave hungry, it's your fault, not theirs. It's nothing uh, for somebody in the country uh, to be hospitable if you show up on them. When well, Bible times, they didn't have Motel 6 that leaves the light on for you. And in Bible times, if you traveled at night, it was very dangerous. There was always thieves and there was always a, a, a rough crowd. Just read that uh, story about the parable of the Good Samaritan. There's always people laying in wait to hurt you and take what is yours. So here's a man who's traveling. He comes to whatever town this is uh, and he says, Hey, I've got a friend. I've got a companion over here. And he shows up, so it's an unexpected companion. Uh, this man wasn't looking for him. This man didn't get a letter uh, saying, I'm coming through. Uh, he didn't get somebody that rode ahead of him and say, Hey, uh, 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 this fellow's coming through on this night. It's totally unexpected. Can I say sometimes things will catch you off guard? Mm. You're not looking for them. They come unexpected. Can I say something else about this parable? Not only did he have an unexpected company, he had an unsuitable clock. In verse number 5, you see it's at midnight. It wasn't at 3 in the afternoon where he could run down to the market. It's at midnight. Can I say they don't have Walmart in the Bible? Kroger's not open in the Bible at midnight. It's midnight. He's got unexpected company, and it's a, at a very inconvenient time. It's midnight. The clock is uh, uh, flipped over to a new day. I mean, uh, uh, nothing is good about this deal right here. huh? I'm telling you, you start banging on, on my door at midnight, you're going to find a, a barrel pointing at you when the door opens. Are you listening? Call me first. huh? They couldn't call him. It's an inconvenient time. It's an unexpected come. I mean, nothing uh, 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 is convenient about this. Can I say sometimes? You get bad news late at night. It's not convenient to get to the doctor's office because they're closed. You say, well, I could go to an emergency room or urgent care. You go to urgent care at midnight, you're not getting urgent care. Hmm. You're upsetting somebody's sleep and they're just going to give you two Tylenol until you go home and see your doctor on Monday. Hmm? 
but I'm telling you, he's teaching them that when things are unexpected and when things aren't convenient, you can always pray. Hmm. We see an unexpected company, an unsuitable clock, and then there's an uncooperative cupboard. He goes to the cupboard to get something to feed this crowd. There isn't nothing there. Hmm. Uh, I'm thinking right now, you know, Looney Tunes, when the mouse goes to the cupboard and they don't even have a, crown, a crumb, you know? Uh, and Tom the Cat's looking at Jerry like, your dinner today, big boy, huh? But he was too stupid to catch him. You know what? Huh? Huh? I just brought up Tom and Jerry because that would be the next cartoon that they cancel. Uh, I always like Tyke the Dog. You know, his little puppy would always mess with, with you know, and anyway, let me get off that. There's nothing in the cupboard. I just told you go to the country, they'll say, I don't have much to eat. They'll find stuff to eat. He don't have anything. Hmm? I guarantee you right now, if we go down and see Miss Betty, in about 20 minutes, there'll be a table full of food. Uh, and she'll be thrilled to do it and happy and stand there and just watch you eat and just get just get overjoyed watching her boy put on the feed bag. Huh? Yeah. She would. Fix all your favorite stuff. Well, she don't remember last time we went there. We was going to take a bath. Nope. We ate. This fellow wanted to do that. There's nothing in the cupboard. It's bare. There's not a person in this building, if you're honest, can raise your hand and say, my cupboard's bare today. Now, you may not have, you may not have everything you want in that cupboard, but you'll find something. This fellow couldn't find anything. Uh, he's got an uncooperative cupboard. It's empty. Unlike today, Bible days, people weren't running around a million miles an hour, and one thing that was big for them was hospitality. Matter of fact, one of the first things you did when somebody came in is you'd wash their feet. And if you didn't wash their feet, you wasn't a good host. And uh, 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 can I say that, and you've heard me tell that folded napkin story, that if you went into somebody's house and they washed your feet and they fed you a good meal when you was done you'd fold your napkin and put it on your plate that was a sign to them because Jews always saw the sign uh, and that was a sign to them that you was well pleased in how you were treated uh, and the host took much gratitude uh, that he treated his guests fairly but if you come in and they didn't wash your feet they didn't feed you good they set Chinese food in front of you and you'd wad that napkin all up and throw it down. And you show them you did not appreciate how you were treated. And my dear friends, next week we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. But are you listening? Uh, they found the grave clothes that they wrapped him in, wadded up, thrown in the, gar in the corner of the tomb. Uh, he was saying, I didn't appreciate how you treated me. Uh, but there was a napkin uh, uh, that had been on his face uh, that was folded and laying there. Uh, and that said, uh, hey, uh, there was something worth coming back for. Uh, and I'm glad he's uh, coming back for us. Uh, but here's this host. He has no food. He knows his guests will not be pleased. Just get it in your mind. He's been waking out of sleep. He's got a friend he hasn't seen for a long time show up on him. He's kicking the kids out of their bedroom and dragging off a sleeping bag into the middle of the living room floor so they'll have a place to sleep. But the cupboard's empty. There's nothing there. But then I want you to understand he had an unchanging companion. He remembered he had a friend. Look again at the parable. Verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. He's looking at an empty cupboard. Brother James, he says, But... I got a buddy down the street. And he goes and he knocks on his door at midnight. I mean, he might as well get the whole neighborhood up. 
And he asked him, he said, Hey, can you lend me three loaves? I've got some unexpected company. Uh, I have nothing to feed them. Can you lend me three loaves? As a unchanging companion. He knew exactly who to go to, Brother Phil. And Jesus says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I'm glad we got an unchanging friend, aren't you? Huh? I'm glad uh, uh, we have a friend. I want to preach on, oh, what a friend is he. Uh, hey, listen, Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man that hath friends uh, must show himself friendly. Uh, and there is a friend... Uh, that sticking closer than a brother. Uh, Malachi 3, 6, uh, uh, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, uh, I change not. A uh, uh, friend, we got a friend, and oh, what a friend is he. Uh, that doesn't change. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's at midnight or new time. Uh, it doesn't matter if your cupboard's full or your cupboard's bare. Uh, you'll find a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, that's a present help in time of need. Uh, uh, can I say something about this friend? Uh, He's a friend that is not bothered by you. Uh, hey, listen, uh, if you go and knock on some people's door at midnight, they'll not appreciate it. Uh, but this friend, uh, you can knock on his door at midnight. Uh, he says, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Uh, he's not bothered by you. Uh, it don't matter about your burden. Uh, doesn't matter about your heartache. Uh, doesn't matter about your problems. Uh, he's not bothered by you. Uh, can I help you with something? He's a God that's never asleep. Uh, he neither slumbers or sleeps. Uh, hey, he's a God that doesn't get agitated by you. Uh, hey, Brother Phil, no matter how many times you step in a mud puddle, uh, he's still there, open arms, uh, welcoming you in. Uh, hey, he's not agitated by you. Uh, he's not asleep. Uh, can I say this? He's not on assignment somewhere. Uh, you can always get a hold of your friend. Uh, He's not bothered by you. Uh, some people are bothered by you. Do you ever call somebody and you just feel like they can't wait to get off the phone? That's not Jesus. Uh, he said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Uh, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Oh, what a friend is mine. Hey, he's not bothered by you. You ever feel like when you talk to him, you're, you're bothering him? You ever feel like you've asked him about this before and you just feel like you're getting on his nerves? You don't. You never bother him. Can I say one came to him and said, teach us to pray. It didn't bother him. Uh, he didn't say you should already know how to pray. He didn't say that. Uh, he didn't say how come you haven't been praying more. Uh, he didn't say, how come you haven't uh, used up all the answers of prayer I gave you from last time? He didn't say any of that. He just taught them how to pray. He's not bothered by you. See, the devil wants to intimidate you, think you're troubling the Lord. You don't trouble him. I got news for you. The Lord don't need nerve medicine. Mm. You're not troubling him. Devil wants to intimidate you thinking, oh, don't ask God for that. That's too small or that's too simple or that's too stupid. No, nothing like that with God. If it concerns you, it concerns the Master, my dear friends. Uh, uh, you're not bothering Him. Listen, my children come to me any time of night about anything. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm glad i got children that will come to me. You know what the Lord says? The Lord says, what I start out with, how come them other 11 didn't ask? When you come to the Lord, you're not bothering Him, but He's wondering, how come all His children don't come to Him? You're not bothering Him. Oh, what a friend is mine. You have a friend uh, who's not bothered by us. Can I say something else? You've got a friend who will listen to your beseeching. Mm. Look again, if you will. Verse number 8. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. See that word importunity? That word means urgent request. This fellow's in trouble and needs help, and the only one he can think of and can help him is his friend. 
And he's knocking on the door, beseeching him to help him. Can I help you with something? The Lord listens at your beseeching. Hmm. No matter how hard you knock, no matter how much you cry, he's listening. Hmm. Hebrews 7.25 says, Wherefore he is able to also save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He lives in glory right now to intercede before you. That's, that's what he lives to do. He's longing for you to ask him for things. That's why he gave us this in the Bible. Hmm? And no plea is too hard for him. Hebrews 4, verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest uh, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, uh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. You know why, Miss Brittany, he don't care if you beseech him? He knows how you feel. See, he became like us, so one day we can become like him. Miss Norween, when you pour your heart out for your family, he knows. He knows how you feel. Uh, there are certain stepbrothers and sisters that didn't, didn't believe on him. He knows how it is to have the family circle broken. He knows, sister. And he says, come boldly and ask. Don't be shy. You can beseech Him. He cares. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Friend, you don't know anybody like this friend, because there's nobody else like Him. He's not bothered by us. Hmm? He said we can beseech Him. He listens to our beseeching. And let me say this lastly. Yes, Thad, I said lastly. Talk about, oh, what a friend is mine. Matter of fact, for, for invitation, Brother Ray, y'all to sing 260. What a friend we have in Jesus. Then so what about this friend who's not bothered by us, who will listen to our beseeching? Here's, here's the whole message right here. He's got plenty of bread. Uh, look at verse number 8 again. Look at it. Look at it. And he says... Uh, 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 yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Uh, notice the fellow asked for three. Uh, he says take all you need. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, sometimes you ask too small. Uh, it don't matter. He's got as much as you need. He's got plenty of bread friends. Uh, hey what are you in need of? Uh, he's got bread. Uh, can I help you? He's got bread of pardon this morning. Uh, hey thanks be unto God if you're sinful uh, he's the answer he's got the bread of pardon uh, hey, if you're lost uh, he'll save you uh, if you're saved and dirty uh, he'll clean you up uh, he said if we'll confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us uh, from all unrighteousness uh, he's got plenty of forgiveness today uh, he's got plenty of bread uh, the bread of pardon pardon means the forgiveness of an offense uh, or to be released from a penalty uh, hey for the wages of sin is death I had a death sentence uh, I was going to die and go to hell but the gift of God uh, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord uh, I got pardoned 47 years ago uh, and have never been the same uh, he's got plenty of bread he's got the bread of pardon uh, Isaiah 55 7 says this let the wicked forsake his way uh, and the unrighteous man his thoughts uh, and let him return unto the Lord for, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God he will abundantly pardon uh, but the key to that whole verse the key to being pardoned is you got to forsake your way and turn to his way hmm Micah 7, 18. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity uh, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Uh, he retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He's got plenty of bread. He's got the bread of pardon. I got this good news for you. He's got the bread of peace. Some of you in here today are troubled. You can have peace. You can have peace in the midst of your storms. He's got the bread of peace, friends. He is the bread of life. He's got the bread of peace. 
I got news for you. He's got the bread of provisions. What do you need today? He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Huh? Nothing is too much for our God. Huh? He will meet your needs. He's got the bread. Hmm? Can I say this? He's got the bread of power. Huh? I was teaching our Sunday school class about being plugged in. Some of you walk right, you spit right, you, you put on your tidy whities right. I mean, everything's right. You read your Bible, you pray, come to church, you pay your tithes, but you don't have any power with God because you haven't asked for it. See, you've been asking for things that make you look good, but His power makes Him look good. Uh, we sing that song, I got the power, 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 huh? Wonderful working power. We don't sing that song anymore because we don't want to lie in church. There is power to overcome any problem you face, and he's got the bread of power. Hmm? Uh, I got news for you. You don't get the bread of power turned on ESPN. You don't get the bread of power turned on Fox News. You don't get the bread of power turned on anything other than him hmm? ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you how come you don't have any power today how come some of you come in here walking on your lower lip this morning oh there is power to overcome whatever you're facing he's got the bread of power can I say this he's got the bread of protection he's got whatever bread you need he's got plenty of it huh he said this Matthew 11 come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden I'll give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy my burden's light he said this Ephesians 3.20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us what do you need today you get a friend who's just waiting for your knock. He's just waiting for you to seek him instead of seeking the bread. You seek him, you get him and the bread. He's just waiting for you to ask and you'll receive. You see, that asking part deals with our pride. As long as you think you can handle it, as long as you think you can obtain it, as long as you think it, you'll do without but when you surrender your pride and say, Lord, I need you, business picks up, friend. Uh, so what do you need today? You've got a friend. His name is Jesus. You may be lost and not even know him, but you've still got a friend in him because he died for you, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures so he could save you from sin. And he will save you if you come unto him. Hmm? He said, I am the way, the life, or the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why don't you come to him today? You can get forgiveness of your sins. Say, what makes some of these people holler and shout and get excited about it? They got forgiven. Huh? You don't think anything about somebody hollering and screaming and shouting for their favorite ball team. Huh? They just got fandomania. fandomania. This crowd around here's got Jesus. They got something to really shout about. Uh, some of you saved, but you're empty. I know who can fill you. Some of you have been asking for the wrong thing. You need to come and ask for Him, and He'll give you all the bread you need. Some of you today just got just 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 got a little cold. Why don't you come? Talk to him. He'll warm you up again. Some of you just needed to be reminded you got a friend. When was the last time you really reached out to your friend? Today would be a good day. Just do business with him. He's got plenty of bread. And he's given you a promise. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. It's all on us. He's got all the provisions. He's just waiting on you and I to come to Him. Let's all stand. Maybe we need to come to Him. Some have already come.
you're here today not saved, come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Here today and say, when's the last time he was truly your best friend? What do you need today? Just come to him. That's all I can tell you. He'll never fail you. They're picking out that song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've provided in our life. But more importantly, thank you for being truly our life. I'm glad we're in Christ Jesus today. Now, Father, I pray for somebody here today not saved that today would be the day of their salvation. Brother Clint's already prayed for that. God, I pray if there's somebody here saved but just grown cold, today they'd come back to you and get set on fire for God. Lord, in a crowd this size, there's no telling the needs, the troubles, the heartaches, the emptiness. God, I pray they'd come get their covers filled today because you've got plenty of bread. Help folks today. And Father, we'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.